thanks. Um, quite me, uh, interesting at the Indonesian Institute. What we do and what we've been doing for a uh, decade now is helping the infrastructure community to be specific. Members with the fact and is, is recognized um, as the first open source implementation of infrastructure as a service. But what I wanted to talk about today is something called virtual observing. Right, so this is what comes So as you all know, our ability to observe the world around us has increased dramatically in the last few years. Right? So people have now a lot of interesting electronic gadgets, all sorts of sensors that allow us to give us more information about the world around us. Right? So you can deploy them in the ocean and measure temperature and pressure and salinity. You can have um, hyperspectral cameras that take pictures with different bands of light of plants that allow you to identify diseases in plants, you have uh, well, all sorts of personal sensors, right? smartphones, you can see Fitbits, we have Harkis, all sorts of special purpose jewelry, right? And we've got innovative ways, in many different ways, of combining all those devices together, right? We've got Wi-Fi, we've got Bluetooth radio, we've got telephone networks and so forth, right? So all those things, right now the sensors are getting cheaper, and they're getting more reliable, Networking is getting more reliable and more ubiquitous, so it's not possible to get a lot of information about the world around us, which was not possible before. And therefore, in many branches of science, people start developing observatories. So here's an example. The observatory that I became involved with a few years ago is called the Ocean um, Observatory Initiative. They are putting, so it's actually changing the nature of the science from the traditional like, part of the science where you get a boat and you go up to the ocean and gather artifacts into an observatory science, so something more like, like um, astronomy, right? When you have a telescope, you observe things. So you're putting a bunch of sensors in the ocean and you're observing the ocean, right? Uh, so, in other words, for many sciences, this ability to observe in real time can change their nature from whatever it is right, right now into something you know, like, like a book with telescope, right? So it's equivalent to the benefit of telescope for the sciences. Uh, some examples. So one is one is the Ocean Observatory Initiative. Um, another one is a course project in Argonne. It's it's a project uh, working uh, so pairing together uh, computer scientists and, and scientists from the environmental divisions, and it's looking at various cycles of plant development. So looking at the uh, weather data, for example, looking at those hyperspectral images I mentioned before, seeing how they affect plants. Right, if the plants are diseased, if they are diseased, maybe you want to. Uh, plus some simulations, maybe you want to get additional data about, uh, let's say, the availability of nutrients in the soil and so forth, right? And learn more, more things about plants uh, in an ongoing cycle. I work also with uh, scientists from the Iowa Flood Center, which are you know, the big agencies uh, predict the floods for many of the big rivers. Iowa Flood Centers look at the use of flash floods, things that are happening in real time, and also tries to understand how this thing is happening, how it can how it can be oil. Water distribution. Um, I've worked with scientists at uh, NCSA, for example, but also this is another interesting type of observatory that are taking Twitter data. And so it turns out when you sign up for Twitter on your uh, cell phone phone and ask you to want to share your uh, current location, it turns out that a lot of people say yes to that. Right? And therefore, there's a lot of data available from Twitter that is unavailable in the location of the are. So you can process this data to find out uh, when people are, for example, Thinking about um, like symptoms, right? You can map out of that and say, oh, there's no way of potentially flu in this area, right? You can also track all this people not. Right? So if you go, if you look for flu mapping, for example, they have a great application that does this sort of thing. Um, so how does that all turn into observatory, right? So a bunch of raw data is not an observatory. In order to have an observatory, you have to now turn this raw data into insight. That means um, you know, the data that could be represented with sciences, which means you have to filter this data, you need to correlate it, you need to process it, you need to uh, maybe run some simulation in a way that will allow you to react to this environment in real time. And it turns out that cloud computing is a fabulous tool for doing that because you can um, spin out those virtual machines in real time, right? And you can have guaranteed response time from those, from those virtual machines, no matter how many of them you want to run. Right, so one problem in, in this virtual observatory model is how well can you scale and how fast can you scale. So if I observe some interesting phenomenon, you know, and I want to run additional um, analysis codes, you know, can I go quickly? Uh, the other 
Thank you. 